good afternoon. So today I am going to be wanting to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects and one of my favorite subjects as many of you know all three of you who are probably listening to this right now many of you know my favorite subject is history duh okay I know you're gonna say well you like history oh my gosh we didn't know that why'd you get in masters of history Steve well guess what I love history so what is history you know History is, I think we can say, many different things. Now, first of all, history is perms. It's a, something that my brother taught me a long time ago, and I added one thing. Now, he would say perms is P-E-R-M-S. I have added the A, so it's P-E-A-R-M-S. Now, what's perms? Perms is history. History is made up of politics. It's made up of um, economics, daily activity, religion, military, and science technology. So that's P-E-A-R-M-S. Now then this history can be divided into two different sections. History is known history, and history is remembered history. Now what's that mean? Well, known history is everything you know, everything you've experienced. Okay, most people find that between the ages of 8 and 12, they start paying attention to the world around them. That's known history. So, for instance, I was born in 1977. The first thing I can remember is 1986, I remember the Oliver, Oliver North trial. Now, I have no idea, really, up to this day, what that trial is all about. I mean, yes, I do, but you know, not that much. But... Alvin North trial, eight years old, 1986. Okay, I remember 1988. I remember the election of 1988, and 1989. I remember the Berlin Wall falling, and then 1990, 1991, all that. So by the time I'm 12, I'm starting to pay a lot of attention. So between eight and 12, if you think back on it, you're going to usually find about the time of eight to 12, you're going to start remembering stuff. So that's your known history. Everything else is remembrance history. Everything else you've been taught. Okay. Now, history is also a different concept. Now, number one, it is very rare that something occurs in history because of a single factor, a single decision, a single trend. For instance, President Theodore Roosevelt took on corporate trust during the administration. He did it for many reasons, not just one. Okay. He did it because it would make good politics at the time. It made good economic sense at the time. It was really part of his religion, quote unquote. Okay, and he loved the military. Very good use of military concepts for him. Boom. Yes, he didn't use the military, but it was very good, you know, order done. Now, number two. It's done in history. Keep in mind that people living in any given period, they're never prepared for what's coming. An invasion, an earthquake, an invention. History is a study of surprises. We can't say, well, we know that, you know, you had this, that, or the other thing. You don't know that we had this, that, or the other thing. It's a study of surprises. Number three. History is study of conflict, wars, conflict, conflict in ideas. Many individual con colonists argued it was essential to stay loyal to England. About 66% of the people during the American Revolution wanted to stay loyal. Well, 33%, give or take, said, who gives a flying bit? 33% said we're staying loyal, and 33% said we're going out and we're going to break away and we're going to form our own independent nation. Okay, but many of them said, "Let's stay." That was conflict. It was a civil war. So number four, history is often shaped by towering figures: George Washington, Theodore Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, 
King George the whatever name one okay there's actually been um, well it's been six of them okay counting figures the history is also made up of many nameless and faceless people slaves farmers factory workers suffragettes these people are exerting energy they take matters in their own hands they drive historical change now Number five, history is also made up in the midst of crisis. It's full examples. A great crisis leads to a dramatic break with tradition. And I'm sorry, my dog is going to be skinned alive in a few minutes. Just ignore her. But the Great Depression led to the New Deal. Now that was a set of programs that would never have been passed by Congress before the 1930s. You would not have seen that in the 1920s. You would not have seen that in the 1860s. You would have seen it in the 1930s. It was its time. The same stuff, the same stuff that's happening now. You would never see that in the 1930s. It's a midst of crisis. It takes place in the midst of crisis. Now, number six, history, if history, is studies of prices, which is. It's all study of choices. Nothing is inevitable. At any given moment in history, you have choices driven by people, made by people. The decisions that Congress made to force Native Americans onto reservations, the decisions that eventually forced President Wilson to declare war on Germany in 1917, the decisions that forced LBJ to declare war on poverty or Vietnam. Decisions that Abraham Lincoln did. Decisions that King Charles I did. S study of choices. Number seven. Many people study history because it's interesting. It's full of compelling characters, dramatic events. It's also important to find a deeper meaning. A deeper significance in history and how it's relevant in our daily lives. Now, history is what we are made of. In other words, the society in which we live has been shaped and is being shaped by our history. So, learning about history helps us better understand the world in which we live. I think it was a Greek man who said it. Of course, you know, you know. I can't remember the name right now, but um, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it in high school, too. But, okay. Number eight. Finally, I cannot stress this enough. We cannot, we must not put our values on the past. Okay? For instance, slavery is evil. I think we all can agree on that. But 1860s, many people thought it was okay. And even if they did not, most white people thought African Americans were inferior. And they should be freed. Okay, about 20% of them said they should be freed. And those 20% said, ship them back to Africa. They cannot survive here. Or, we know what Hitler did in the 1930s and 1940s. Many people in England and France were willing to go along and get along with Hitler. They remember the Great War. They remember the horror of that conflict. They did not wish to see another in their lifetime. They did not, did not realize that Hitler is going to end up killing 6 million Jews and 6 million others in the Holocaust and that millions more are going to die in World War II. They did not realize that because of World War II we're going to be having nuclear weapons. They realized the war has ended. War needed to be ended because it was evil. They needed to end it forever. So that's what they were doing. Okay. So, where do we go from here? Well, this is going to be the first of many uh, introduction, I guess. In the next few days, I'm going to be starting a series of podcasts. It'll be like this through this channel. So, for all three of you who are watching this, in which I'll be talking about historical subjects. Now, one of the historical subjects I am going to be talking about is 
going to be the Bible's history. What's that mean? How historically accurate is the Bible? We're going to be looking at that. Another course I'll be teaching. These are all free, by the way. You get me free, 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 free. If you want to pay me for a little bit, hey, I take money, but otherwise it's free. Number two is going to be my favorite subjects. Always been my favorite subjects for, I don't know, 20 some years, and that is the American Civil War. Another subject I'm thinking of doing is looking at Europe at the time of the Renaissance, the time of the Reformation, and going forward from there. I may go backwards a little bit and start talking about the Middle Ages and then jump forward into the Renaissance and then keep on going, see how far we can go. I really like the 19th century as well, so, you know, may even talk about World War I 100 years ago. So those are some topics. I just want you to think about that. Thank you very much for listening to me and watching me, and I hope we have some good times. And, uh, yeah, thanks.